Hey guys, welcome back to another video and today we're going to be looking at color grading DJI Air 3 footage. So essentially D-Log M to Rec 709 or what you're used to seeing on YouTube because I have had people ask how I color grade. I use DaVinci Resolve. So I'm going to show you in this video and then I will also have four LUTs available that you can find in the link in the description box down below. So I thought we could use this video as an interim until the DJI Avatar 2 comes out. And then obviously there's gonna be a series of videos on the Avatar 2. So remember to subscribe if you wanna learn more about the Avatar 2. Let's not waste any more time, jump into DaVinci Resolve and we can start color grading. Okay, here, once you've opened up your project, let's do a quick overview of DaVinci Resolve first. So I shoot my drone footage in 30 frames per second. So what you wanna make sure here is that your timeline, so you can see here timeline two, it's currently at frame rate 25 foot per second. So what I wanna do is I just wanna delete the footage, timeline, timeline settings, and then I wanna change this, well, 29.97, that's what I normally use. I'll make sure it's in 4K and we're good there. You also want to make sure that if you're using Mac or Windows, you want to make sure that your timeline is set at the correct color space. Otherwise, when you export the footage, it looks different and you don't want that. So if we go to the settings cog in the bottom right hand corner, just here, and then we click on color management and you can see here, well, it says D DaVinci uh, YRGB color manage. You can just click this one and then I would use, where is it? So if you're on Mac, you want Rec 709. Well, Rec 709 would be normal if you're a Windows user, but as I'm, as I'm a Mac user, I'm gonna go to Rec 709, click R to get to there quicker. There we go. And then I click save. So these are the ones I've done earlier, but we're gonna jump into a new one. So now we can drop our footage into the timeline. So this currently right now is D-Log M footage. It looks very flat. As a quick overview, this is with the timeline page right now. So we have the media pool, and then you have your inspector column. But if we move to the color tab, as a quick overview of the color tab, on the top left here, you have your LUTs, and you then have your, your node tree here, which you wanna have because you're gonna wanna need this when you're color grading. Here in the middle, you will see here your clips, and you can literally toggle these on and off if you don't want to see it, if you have multiple clips, but we're going to keep this on now. On the bottom left here, you can have your selection of your wheels, which I will cover in a minute. And then you have your waveforms here on the bottom right, and you can switch between your different forms here. So you can probably keep waveform, uh, your, wave, your waveform here. And this is essentially just showing you the color within the image, what's going on. Now, before we do start color grading, you want to add the conversion LUT. If you watch other videos on DaVinci Resolve, everyone talks about having the color transform. So if I show you quickly by adding a new node, so your new node would be option S. Option S for Mac will add a node after the current one. And then if you do shift S, add a node before that. Now, normally, if you go to the effects panel here and then just do a transform, this is what everyone talks about, where it's color transform, and then you start putting in the input space and what foot it is. Apparently with D-Log M, there isn't a color transform. You can use D-Log Gamma, but it, has, it doesn't work for me. That's not what I do. So I'm gonna reset this. So just right click, reset. And then I wanna go to LUTs and you can download DJI's free conversion LUT here. And then you just wanna click it. And you wanna make sure that this LUT is at the end of your node tree because this is your effectively your color transform. What's happening now is the first one is the actual footage and the last one is D log M. So if I press command D, that disables the node. You can see we're back to where we were on D log M and then this is the conversion LUT, which is Rec 709. And as you can see, looks fine, but it's a bit dark. And this is why we wanna do some color grading to make our footage look better. And that's how I post my drone reels. So once you've done that, you don't really need to do anything, but you wanna make sure you select the first node now because all your coloring that you wanna do is on the first node. And if again, if you watch other DaVinci Resolve users, how they color grade, whether it is drone or camera, whatever it's gonna be, nodes are very important to be able to structure your coloring. So you can do everything in one node, but if you want a little bit more control, you can split the nodes up. If you wanna learn more about nodes and how you, you can use the nodes separately, I recommend you just do a quick YouTube search 
and just watching some of those other videos, those who know DaVinci Resolve professionally. However, in this video, I'm just showing you how to color grade D-Log M footage from the DJI 3 or the Osmo Pocket 3 or the new Leovada 2, which shoots in D-Log M. This is how I do it and I haven't really had an issue. So we jump back to this original node. Now we want to start coloring. First of all, as a quick overview, you have col your color wheels here. These are the, this is all your options that you have. And if you click on this one here, your primary color wheels, there's like a sub menu here called log wheels. And then you have your HDR wheels. And you can see here, you've got a little scroll button to go back and forth. It's obviously very overwhelming DaVinci Resolve, I know. However, it's actually straightforward. So if we go to your primary color wheels, think of this as your larger adjustments. And then if we go to your log wheels, these are more intermediate adjustments within each one. And then your HDR wheels are very, very specific adjustments from your shadows all the way to your highlights. And this is how you effectively can think of it. So if we go back to the primary log wheels, lift, gamma, and gain. Shadows, mid-tones, highlights. Just think of it like that. And it's the same with your log wheels shadow mid-tone highlights. HDR wheels, now you can adjust things like your black, the very dark points, the shadows, your lights, your highlights, and then specular. And then you have your global wheel here as well, which is the same for all of them. You even have your curves here as well. I mean, you can interchange these and mix these too. I like to keep things simple. And if you wanna watch a video that explains these in more detail, I'll also put that in the link in the description box down below. Now let's get on to coloring this footage. So I usually start off with the primaries because these make the larger adjustment. So first of all, we can see it's quite dark. So I wanna go to my left. I'm gonna use this wheel here to lift up the shadows a little bit, just a little bit. Don't go crazy because you can easily just blow it out and you can just click this button here to reset it. So I'm just gonna lift it slightly. I think about there is fine. And you can see on your right hand side, your scopes that we've lifted the shadows. So if I go back again, you can see like this is crushed and then lifting it all the way up you're moving the waveforms. So I think about there looks good. Midtones look fine. I don't think we need to adjust these much because it looks more matte. If I lift it and then bring it down, we'll add a little bit of contrast. Again, just looking at the image, playing with the wheels and look, take a look at what looks good to you. As for gain, again, this controls like the lighter portions of your footage. I don't think much needs to be adjusted here. And again, we can look at our scopes to see if we're blown out. I think we're good here. We can start adding color as well now. So in the shadows, what color do we want? You can see if I go all the way to the blue, that's what it looks like. I don't think that looks that good. However, if it goes like that, a very, very slight movement there that you can see I've barely moved it. However, there is a difference. If I click, uh, if I go back, you can see the very slight adjustment there. And then we could do the mid-tones a little bit. I think it's just about playing around with what look works for you. And then we could do the highlights as well. But the highlights is controlling the sky, which I'm not a fan of. So I'm gonna leave that there. You even have at the bottom here, if you wanna add more color, you can do color boost. So I can add, there we go. You can see there's more color there now. So if I go Command Z to go back and then Command Shift Z to return to that, we've added a lot more color to our footage. We even have this here for shadows. If you wanna lift up the shadows a little bit more, there we go. I think that looks better. And again, you can adjust your highlights if you wanna make it brighter. I think that's too bright, so maybe I think we'll leave it where it is because we're good there. You can adjust your saturation. So if you want to desaturate it black and white, or if you want to bring it up a bit, use more saturated and vivid. I think that's too much if you ask me. So if we go just a tiny bit, maybe 55. Let's make a vivid, a vivid one here. You can ha adjust the hue if you wish, but that looks, makes your footage look crazy. So I'm just going to reset that. So now we've, we've adjusted our primaries. We want to go to our log wheels. So these are now more incremental changes that we're gonna do. So looking at our footage, everything looks nice. Do we wanna make any more adjustments to our shadows here? So I don't think we need to make any more. Maybe if we bring it down a little bit and then mid-tones, we don't need to do much there. And then the highlights, very, uh, I don't think we need to do anything with that. So you can just hit the reset. Do we wanna add color? So again, these are incremental changes on top of the primaries. So you can see here, it's not, it's not making it as blue as it was in the primary wheels. These are the log wheels. So I think about there is fine. Ooh, you know what? If I go up a bit, you can, you can actually move this a lot more. So you can see if I bring it to the orange, it actually looks more orange. The buildings, where I reset it. Because it is like a spring sunset in a way, I might actually add more here because it looks better and you can probably bring this up a bit more there you go i actually like that 
And in the highlights, do we want to change anything? You can add to the sky. I don't particularly like doing it too much to the highlights here. You're better in the HDR wheels. But I think that looks good. We don't need to make any other adjustments. Now, if we go to HDR wheels, these are even more finite tunings that we can do. If I go to the highlights section, this is only gonna adjust the very top part of the image. So we're not gonna do much here. So you can see here, it's only affecting the buildings per se. So at the moment, let's say we wanna add a bit of an orange glow to the BMO tower there. I think we're good. And we can even feather this. If we use these, this slider here, you can see like we take some away and we bring some back. And if you double tap it, it will just reset. And you can see if you add this, you can add plus or minus here as well. But I think we want to, there you go, that's reset. I think we can feather that out a bit. I think that looks good. So you can see the difference it makes. So you can just the pinpoint there, just a tiny bit. So if you right click, it resets it. And then if you just drag it back. So we have lifted everything a bit, just a tad, just a tad. And if we look at our scopes here, we haven't got anything underexposed. We haven't got really much clipping. There's a little bit here, but it's very slight. I wouldn't stress about that. But that is essentially it. And if you wanna add a bit sharpness, if you go back to your primaries, here where it says the mid detail, if you go backwards, you can see how soft the image has become. And then if we go all the way, you can see how much sharper it's become. And obviously that's too much. I don't know, maybe give it about 20%. There you go. About 20 just to sharpen it up. Now, if we go to the full image, this is what we currently have, color graded. And this is what it was like before. And that is with the, the DJI Air LUT. So this is DJI's conversion LUT. The number you see is completely dark, even though it's colored, it's just very dark. But we wanna bring that up. So all of a sudden, if we do Command D to re-enable re the node, we have a lot more color now. And if we press play, looks fantastic. And you can see the prop because this was shot on the DJI Air 3 wide angle lens. You can check the link up here if you wanna see that video. And that is pretty much it. The only thing you need to do now is just export. And when you when you go to export, you wanna make sure, I always export at H.264. I always put MP4. Make sure that you're at 4K. Check your frame rate. Uh, just add to the render queue, render out, and you should be good. But remember to recap, to make sure your timeline is the correct frame rate. So timeline two is 29.97. I was shooting at 30 frames per second. That's what you wanna make sure it's matched. You wanna make sure your color space is at Rec 709A. If you're on Mac, just Rec 709 if you're Windows. Make sure the color science is uh, DaVinci YRGB. And I think that's it. And then what I will do is, if we go to this timeline one here, so these are all the other options that I have. So this is me color grading earlier. So this is spring blue, city blue hour. Then we have sunset glow, and then we have sprit sea breeze. So these are the four LUTs that I have created. I will link those in the description box down below. And one more thing to add, once you've color graded one of your clip, let's say you have a bunch of clips on your timeline and you wanna copy these across, all you do is Command C or Control C to copy this, and they just copy it across all your footage, and then just make fine adjustments where need to be. That's pretty much it. That is how I color grade my footage with the DJI Air 3 or D-Log M to Rick 709. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section down below. Remember to give this video a like, subscribe for more videos on drones, photography, and everything in between. And I'm hoping the following video after this one, we'll have the DJI Avatar 2 and we'll be exploring that in the weeks and months to come. See you in the next video. Peace.